our Halloween bake along. Hello, thank you so much for everyone that's tuning in today. Um, I'm Sarah Kidd, I am a professional vegan baker, and Zach, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Zachary Bird, and I'm an unprofessional vegan cook, uh, and I am the author of Vegan Junk Food, a down and dirty cookbook. Yes, which I've got, wait, can we show everyone? Could we? It's it looks like that. So check it out. And it looks really good sitting next to your copy of Vegan Baked by Sarah Kidd. It looks really good next to it. So, I mean, you'll have to put it to the test yourself, won't you? <laughs> so thanks so much for tuning in for our special vegan Halloween live bake-along. I'm going to be showing you how to make some really cool killer cupcakes with a bloody surprise. And Zach, what are you making? I'm making deep fried mac and cheese balls. Here's one I made a couple of minutes ago. And I'm going to be making a Bloody Mary dipping sauce to make it all spooky themed. And so I'm on level with Sarah's beautiful creation today. That sounds amazing. And we just have to give a quick shout out to our amazing sponsor, Angel Food. Angel Food, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode with Zach and I. We're actually going to use some of your amazing products today. I'm using their cream cheese. Uh, so you can grab the cream cheese in New Zealand in all the supermarkets and vegan specialty stores and health food shops. And Zach's using the Parmesan cheese, which you can get in Australia. And they have a wide variety of products as well to check out. Yeah, so check out the Cruelty Free Shop if you're in Australia because Angel Foods is in our beautiful country. And today I'm using the Parmesan for mac and cheese, which is mega fancy. And I've never done a whole <laughs> Parmesan mac and cheese bowl. So I think it's going to be incredibly decadent. So I'm really excited to use the Angel Foods Parmesan. Fantastic. Okay, so everyone just, if, when I'm looking over this way, I'm actually looking at my computer so I can see what Zach's doing uh, and just check that all the technical stuff is running. But first off, let's get started. So what I want to show you how to do first with these cupcakes, so it's a gluten-free lemon cupcake uh, with a raspberry jam type feeling that we strain so it looks really bloody. And then it's got a cream cheese um, topping, frosting on top, and then we have blood dripping, and then we've got these little cute little fondant knives. Let me show you what they look like. They look insane. Ooh. So cute. But with the fondant knives, you have to make them first. So I thought I'd show you how to do that. Usually you make them the day before because you want them to set. So just to start off, I've just got some fondant and I put, uh, you just want to check with the ranges of fondant once vegan. So I use satin ice. It's really easy to use. Renshaw is also vegan and Baker's is also vegan as well. So I've just got a tiny little bit of white. I'm just putting some gloves on, otherwise my hands will go away. I've got a little tiny piece of white fondant, and I've added just a little bit of raised food coloring, and I'm just going to work that in. And, and so you use a toothpick to get your colour into your fondant, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so I just got a little toothpick, but I just I tried to do this ahead of time, but it just didn't work. And I just put like a little dot into my fondant, and I'm using Americolor colours. Um, they're all vegan as well, and they're totally accessible everywhere in the world. And then I've also got a small piece of black fondant. And you make me about 10 of these, and they're quite small. So you only need like a little tiny ball like that much, and a tiny ball like that. And then I've also got some little tiny circles. Can you see them? Um, which are just candy circles from Fancy Sprinkles. And they make up, so you see the knife, the extra little circle in the corner that makes it look like a butcher's knife. So whilst I've work this fondant. Zach, you want to talk about talking us through what you're up to? I would absolutely love to. So you can't make a deep fried mac and cheese ball without mac and cheese. So I have gone to the luxury gone to the organization of making a big ass batch last night. So to make a vegan mac you and cheese. Cheated? Sorry? So you cheated. What? <laughs> you cheated. You made it last night. I did cheat. No, it's an art attack. Here's one I prepared earlier. I've it's the, like the best thing to do. So no one wants to watch me make a roux. If you jump on my website, to make vegan mac and cheese, it starts with a roux, just like normal mac and cheese. So that is some sort of fat and some sort of flour to make a really thick paste. And then you add in your soy milk and your non-dairy cheese, in which case I've used the angel food parmesan. And then I've got some extra things in there for flavor. So that's a squirt of mustard, nutritional yeast, garlic powder, and that's to give it a little bit more complexity just because we are using vegan cheese. And what I've loved about using the angel food is because it actually has coconut flour in it, it absorbs a lot of the liquid, so you can use a lot less flour and a lot more milk to make uh, a really beautiful cheese sauce. So this actually 
stretches out to make a lot. So this is my normal recipe worth of mac and cheese, but because this cheese sauce is so potent, I actually made this much cheese sauce left over. So wow. it's a really, a really good investment. <laughs> All right, so I've turned my white fondant into grey, right? So I've got a little bit of icing sugar on my plate. Now you either need a clean bench surface or like a pastry mat. And then I'm just going to roll this out to about two millimeters thick. You don't want to be, you don't want it to be too thick, but you don't want it to be too thin. So about one to two millimeters. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to take a bite of the mac and cheese ball that I had earlier to get the mood going. Ah, nice. Mm. Well, I, I cheated as well. I've already made the cupcakes. They're sitting in the background here. Because otherwise, if I did show you how to make the cupcakes, we would be here for literally hours. All right. Oh. I'm going to show you how to make a little blade knife. So it's like one of those big kitchen butcher knife type things. So all you're doing is you're cutting around 10 to 12 small rectangles. So you can use two tools. You can just use a really sharp fairy knife or one of these which is a paste scraper and it just helps you measure it a little bit easier. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to guess and I'm just going to cut three strips that are around the same size. I mean this isn't an exact science. This is just It's art. It's beautiful. <laughs> Beauty just make is it an eye of the beholder, and especially at Halloween time, beauty comes in every shape and form. So if you screw up your knife, it's just an old knife. It's just one that's seen a lot of wear and use. <laughs> yeah. And there's just a little tip with this as well. If you don't have time to leave your knife overnight to set, you can actually add some of this, which is CMC powder, and it actually hardens your fondant a lot quicker. So you can probably make it like in the morning and then it'll be quite hard by the afternoon to put onto your cupcakes. So I've just pull that product was, please. Oh yeah. CMC powder. It? Ooh. And you can just get it in Spotlight or in any of your cake decorating stores. And it just helps harden up your fondant so it's really nice and hard and stiff. All right. So I've cut some strips off like this. And then I'm literally going to put them on top of each other to cheat. So they're going to be all the same size. And then I'm just going to use my cake scraper and just cut some little rectangles. And then I've got this. Can you guys see that? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. I right. can. <laughs> you can see it. You can see it. And how easy is that? So that's your blade. Now, what you want to do is get your little circles and you're going to push them into the left hand top corner. I just need a little bit of water. It so sounds like these adorable little knives could be used for so many spooky treats. You know, you could make a whole mm -hmm. batch and make just a whole smorgasbord of horrific creations. Totally. And it's probably up to you how much detail you go into. You don't actually have to do this step, but to stick fondant together, you can either mix some CMT powder with a little bit of water just to see how feeling is like the tiniest amount, or just use some water and dab it onto the left-hand top corner. And then I'm just going to grab one of these little dots which you can also make out of fondant as well. I'm not yeah. great with really tiny things, so I like them to kind of be made. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just push it into the corner. So can everyone see that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's a little bit hard when the camera's so far away to get close enough to you. <laughs> All right, so you want to do that. even looking at a camera. <laughs> no, I mean, you want to do that 10 to 12 times depending on how many cupcakes you make. Then, really quickly, you're going to get your black fondant and I'm just going to roll it out on the bench. Now, Jack, uh, Jack, Zach, do you want to talk about your next step while I roll this out? I would love to. You keep playing with Play Doh, which looks like a lot of fun. And honestly, I think I'm going to get into baking because that looks really fun. I am going to have a lot of fun with my deep frying now. So, to deep fry and crumb anything, it's usually the same process. So what I'm doing here applies to jalapeno poppers, onion rings, 
deep fried lasagna. I deep fried a whole pizza last week. You can deep fry anything if you've got the wait, right wait, attitude. Wait, did you eat that whole pizza? I, well, yeah, I did. I ate the entire pizza. Over the course of one or two hours, thank you. Oh, but, that's uh, <laughs> So anyone playing at home, there's a Scottish, a Scottish cuisine. It's called Pizza Crunch, and then you get a frozen pizza, you crumb it, and then you just deep fry the whole thing and put salt and vinegar on top. And... Your acid, re your acid reflux is not going to be happy with you, but your taste buds are going to be so pleased. So do give it a go if you've got nothing to lose at all. Um, but back, I back to what we're doing. <laughs> so to crumb, you, you need three elements. You need, you need four elements. You need your ingredient. Today's mac and cheese. You need a bit of flour to give it an initial coat and because that we, we want a really a hard seal around our ingredient for it to fry in. We need something like an egg or a binder. So you can make a buttermilk at home, which Sarah Kid is no stranger to. But I'm going to be using aquafaba today from some butter beans because I had butter beans for dinner. So I've got aquafaba from butter bean and I've got panko breadcrumbs with some nutritional yeast and some salt and pepper. And all you have to do is ball up the mac and cheese into a very tight, very small ball because they do get bigger once you crumb them and fry them. And once you've got that small ball covered in flour, Dip it in the aquafaba and then you just place it into your breadcrumbs and press it into a ball. And guess what? You're ready to deep fry. So while Sarah Kid continues, I'm just going to be balling up my mac and cheese and taking it through the flour, aquafaba and breadcrumbs. So we're ready for my next step. Okay, hold on. For people who haven't used aquafaba before, do you want to give them a quick rundown of what it is? Uh, I'm going to move the camera up for this one. Aquafaba, <laughs> if you are somehow not in the loop, Get ready. Aquafaba is the liquid from a can of beans. This this guy, this is your egg for the rest of your life. All you need is the liquid, and you literally use that instead of an egg to crumb things and get things to combine. You can whip it with sugar to make meringues and uh, marshmallows and lots of beautiful things that egg whites are used for. And it really, uh, you it, it applies in most recipes like an egg, so you can use it for baking. You really, the only limit is you can't make an omelette. Other yeah. than that, it's your egg replacer. So do not pour this down your sink. Three tablespoons equals one egg in baking. So I get these beautiful little ice cube trays that hold exactly three tablespoons. And I pour this in when I'm done. And then when I need an egg later, I just pop out one egg from my ice cube tray and I'm ready to bake. Amazing. I'm just looking at people's comments. Oh, um, comments. Um, hello, I don't have the app because my phone is super old. Oh, okay. People are watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good news. Hello and welcome from it's Australia and New Zealand. Hello, hello, hello. Um, okay, right. So we're making the blade for our knife. Really simple. Now I've rolled out the black fondant for around the same thickness. You want it to be exactly the same thickness, otherwise you're going to have this big chunky handle and this flimsy little tiny, tiny knife and it's not going to stick together. So all you're doing is you're cutting out little handles. So I've got my paste scraper, but you can also use a knife. And I'm just going to make like thinner strips this time that are about this thick. Let me show you. And then I'm just going to make like two of those. And then cut them into the size that you want the handles to be. It's a bit of guesswork. Like you can just grab one of your squares rectangles, push the blade in. All right, might be a bit too thin, so I'll make a thicker one. Well, and I am just continuing on my end. This is a fully completed one. And just know that once you've gotten the macaroni into the flour and the aquafaba, it's gonna try and fall apart. It will try and fight you. But all you need is a bit of authority and put it straight into this breadcrumb mixture. Because once it's here, it's in the safety zone. And you can now remold it and press it really hard to make sure it's a really dense, uh, homogenous product that won't fall apart. So you do get a second shot over here in the breadcrumb station to make sure you have a perfect crumbed mac and cheese ball. Can we see this? Hey, Sheridan. Beautiful. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Debbie. I'm just randomly saying hi to people because I can see them commenting. All right, so I've made the blade, and it's about like. I mean, it's just a tiny little um, strip. And then what you want to do, it's always good to have your fondant pieces on like a bit of stainless steel. 
so that you can just pop them straight in the fridge and you're not trying to peel them off the bench because they'll move. So I've just got a, a little paintbrush for a little bit of water on the side where I'm putting the fondant knife. And then I'm just pushing the knife into the blade to make sure it sticks. Oh, I made that one way too big. So another rule with the mac and cheese ball is as you go along, your eyes are going to become bigger than your stomach and you're going to keep making them bigger and bigger. And then you're going to end up with one double the size and it won't fry in time and you'll shoot yourself in the foot. So do keep them consistent if you can. All right, so I'm actually going to come over to the camera and show you what this looks like. Jack, can you see that? So I just literally just put oh. into it. And then you can like, you can work it and you can shape the knife to make it more look like a blade or whatever you want. I feel threatened just from over, over the stream. That's a really authentic, beautiful knife. <laughs> so what you want to do is make the amount of cupcakes that you have. So I've got 12 cupcakes. So I already made them and I've popped them into the fridge. I made them this morning, so they're still a little bit soft, but you can see like they're pretty, like they're firm enough to pop into a cupcake. Now, once you put them in the cupcakes, you want to do that at the very last minute because they're going to get soggy from the sauce and the fondant is going to start to like fall apart. So as like you want to do it as, as closest to serving them. Anyway, so that's how you make the fondant knives. So you just want to pop them in the fridge overnight if you have the time. If you don't, you want to use some of that CMC powder to harden it up, but you still need to give it some time to harden up. So I'm just going to veganism. We've got fake meat. We make our own edible knives. Me and Sarah Kidder are presenting fake at uh, Adelaide Vegan Festival next week. We're not even going to be there in person. We can do anything we want. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are both live streaming cooking demos into Adelaide Vegan Festival. So if you're there, come Come see us in the cooking tent. We'll be there in spirit on the screen. We'll be there in spirit. A lot of spirit, though. So much spirit, you won't see more. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to clean up my bench so I can move on to showing you how to make the bloody filling. So I'm coming up to my sixth ball. There's only so much you can fit in a deep fryer at once. And... This is all for me. So I think I'm going to stop around six or seven and then I'll be moving over to my stove top and showing you how to deep fry at home. So if you are playing along at home, we're only five minutes away from all the deep frying tips that you could dream of. <laughs> How's everyone's Halloween going? Is everyone having a nice weekend? Are you going to a Halloween party? Are you, do you celebrate Halloween? Can you legally leave your house yet? Because some of us... <laughs> Some of us are really available for this live stream because there's nowhere else for me to be here in Melbourne. That's so, so true. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for coming and joining and being my friend right now. It's very, it's very much a morale boost. Aww. Poor Zach. I mean, I'm streaming, streaming from Auckland, New Zealand, so we are back on level one. But Zach's in Melbourne, which is like the worst place to possibly be. <laughs> we dream of a level one one day, but... You know, we're all in a different place in the world. It's just so interesting. I'm really glad that we can collaborate online like this. Yeah. When COVID started was when me and Sarah did our first live stream. Uh, and what, it's been six months. How much we've grown. You've got oh my a beautiful God. set now. Six months? Oh, yeah, because when we did it, I was, this was half, half bait, kind of. So while you're getting ready, can you tell us what the next episode of Vegan Around the World is going to entail? Uh, so the next episode, I have this cooking show that's called Vegan Around the World for you who haven't heard about it, and pretty much I'm just making cakes all, I'm making, I'm veganizing classic cakes from all around the world, and I just did the Battenberg, and the next episode is going to be the Australian Lamington, and I'm making these really cute little Lamington cakes that are filled with cream and jam. Um, they're super, super cute. Uh, and I'm sure people are going to get angry because I'm Australian, and I think they're Australian and New Zealanders, so <laughs> they're from New Zealand, so it's going to be an interesting episode. As long as we don't talk about pavlova, because it was when I was living in New Zealand that I decided to tell everyone that they were wrong about the origin of the pavlova, I yep. was wrong. Right. I'll say it, pavlova is a kiwi dish. It is. Sorry. <laughs> we stole it. <laughs> don't All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to make the bloody filling, and you want to make this before you do um, your buttercream and get your cupcakes ready, because you actually need the time to let it cool because if you put it in your cupcakes and you put cream on the top, it's going to melt the cream. So I've just got a, like a saucepan and I've got 
So about 200 grams of raspberries that were frozen about half an hour ago, but they're not frozen anymore. I'm popping that in the saucepan, and I've got a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice, and I've just got some crushed sugar, and 120 grams of crushed sugar. Just going in there. So I'm just eating, but what I have done is I made this big mess, which means I've successfully crumbed all of my mac and cheese balls. So here's what they look like. They're beautiful, round, and filled oh. with angel food's cheesy flavour. And nice. they only need to fry for two to three minutes until they're beautiful and golden brown. And then, we're not done, Bloody Mary sauce is coming. So while Sarah continues here, I'm going to be migrating over to my stovetop. Oh, they look great, Zach. All right, so we've popped all that in the saucepan, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring it to a boil. And while that's boiling, I've got uh, two tablespoons of corn flour that I've just mixed up with a little bit of water just so it's completely mixed. You never want to add flowers straight into anything if you're using it. If not, what's going to happen is they're going to get really lumpy, and then you're going to end up with this lumpy mess, like stuff when you're making carrots and jams. You always want to mix with corn flour with some water before you put it in. So I'm just going to bring this to a boil. And then we can stir through our corn flour and move on to the next step. And oh, the other thing I'm going to add in some of the extra extra red is just a few bunches of red food coloring. This one is pretty red anyway, but I just want it to be super red. All right, so Zach, how are you doing? Uh, throwing to me? Your turn. What do you got? My turn, me. Okay, hello. So, <laughs> welcome to the other part of my kitchen, which is not a beautiful step. So, deep frying you don't need a fancy can I flip this I'm sure I can when I'm deep frying you do not need a fancy uh, deep frying machine a pot with a heavy bottom and some canola oil is good to go I love this little Daiso uh, thing that I got which is perfect for lowering things into oil and removing it safely you definitely want paper towels ready to go my trick is to always put it in a bowl because then you can put your fried product and then just whip out the paper towel when you're done and all the salt and all the flavor stays in the bowl ready to eat. So this is currently, oh, you can actually have a look at this. I've got this cool little temperature gun and we're going to find out what my temperature is at. We're currently at 82 degrees Celsius and we're not going to be frying until we hit 180 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to need about three to four minutes to get this temperature up. And then the good stuff happens. Oh, nice. I love those little technical gadgets. I really need to get one of those. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to let this boil and reduce. It's going to take a little while. So um, I'm going to get other things ready. What we need is a big strainer <laughs> and a bowl. This is one. This is for boiling and cooking. We're actually going to strain out all the raspberry seeds so that it's all, like, it looks more authentically like the like. <laughs> so I'm excited. Me too. So Ginger's saying, um, Angel Foods Cheese working to get it in Melbourne. You can only get the Parmesan cheese in Melbourne, so where did you get it from, Kat? I went to the Cruelty Free Shop, which has an awesome vegan cheese selection, and they've got Angel Foods. So a couple of years ago, there was a couple of more options because Angel Foods has some really divine products. But at this stage, you can reliably get the Parmesan from Cruelty Free Shop, and that's Australia-wide. Perfect. Um, and obviously in New Zealand, it's pretty much absolutely everywhere because everyone absolutely loves it. It's my favourite cheese. I've always got so many blocks of it in the fridge. I know they're sponsoring the episode, but I still really love the product. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, while I'm waiting for my oil to come up, do you have two minutes to give me the, the, the limelight? Yes, go for it. Hi. Okay, so my oil is coming up to the temperature and I'm going to get started on my sauce super quickly. So the secret to a delicious vegan dipping sauce, they all come from mayonnaise. Every delicious sauce that you love, tartar, ranch, Big Mac sauce, it's all flavoured mayo. So here's how you make vegan mayo. Here's my base. I've got four tablespoons of soy milk. I've got three quarters of a teaspoon of vinegar and I've got a quarter teaspoon each of garlic powder, mustard and salt. That's all you need. You can also replace the soy milk with aquafaba. But I ran out because I used it to dip my macaroni and cheese balls, so I'm going to be using soy milk. The important thing is there's so many ways to make vegan mayo at home. You can even use bread or psyllium husk as your base, but it's oh. dirt cheap. So give it a go because all you have to do is with those things in there, 
give it a little froth. And then I've got three quarters of a cup of canola or vegetable oil, something super neutral. And all I do is slowly pour it in whilst using my stick blender to emulsify it. And that's how you make mayo. And then once we're done frying our ball, I'm going to be mixing in lots of flavor. And we're going to make it Bloody Mary flavored just to keep it on theme. So I'm going to be slowly pouring this in. It might be a little bit loud, but this uh, is how you make mayonnaise. I'm going to do that while my oil's coming up to temperature. Oh, that's perfect. All right, so my raspberry has reduced a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stir through the corn flour now. What I'm going to do is just stir through. I'm going to incorporate the corn flour so that it doesn't become lumpy. I'm going to notice that it's going to thicken up really quickly. Am I ruining the audio with my current uh, task? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, cool. Let me smash this so quick. All right, I'll wait. So I put most of my mayo in, and as you can see, it's getting really nice and thick. So once you've got a really good emulsion, you can start dumping this oil on top because it's got much less of a chance of breaking it. A little bit more. Oh, that's the good stuff. All right, a little bit more oil. Now we've got a really thick mayo. And let me see if I can show you. As I'm pouring the oil in, oh, that's just my face. That mayo, can you see? That oil is sitting on top because it's nice and thick now. And we've got much less of a chance of ruining everything. So right now, like I say with the crumbing, you're in your safety zone. You can take a deep breath. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> Oh, yes. All right, last lot, and then I'm done making all this noise. Hurry up. The entire vibe. <laughs> all right. That is mayonnaise ready to go. So it might have been a painful two minutes to watch me do that, but it only took two minutes, so that's like. I have to pour this in, so it's thickened up a lot, reduced by half, so I'm just going to pour it straight into a spray nine. You can see how thick it is. Oh, see, it already looks kind of bloody, but we just want to get rid of all those raspberry seeds. And that's like big, and it's through. Yeah, so you got that love. And also in the lemon flavour of the pumpkin as well, because you've got that lovely tart raspberry flavour. It's even sweetened with sugar. And then you've got the lemon pumpkins that are gluten free. And I swear no one will ever know they're gluten free. I remember the fact they're gluten free these days. Alright. I like the deception. So I'm just going to scrape the bottom off. And I'm just going to transfer this to a smaller container because I actually need to put it straight into the freezer to cool it down. It has to completely cool down. It has to cool down before you put it in the Oh, look at that blood. Really oh, that looks disgusting. Great. <laughs> All right, I'm and speaking of disgusting, I've got some, this is what mayo looks like. See, that's definitely emulsified and nice and spreadable. So that's ready for me to add my flavor. And when you use soy milk as your base for mayonnaise, it comes out super thick. So it actually works better as a base for sauces. So when I make something like tzatziki mayo, I put half a cup of cucumber juice in here, but it's thick enough to still hold it and be a beautiful sauce that you can spread on things. So just to update you, my oil is at 178 degrees, which is exactly the prime frying temperature. So I'm gonna see if I can source a cameraman so that you can see these balls going into the oil 
as they do. So I'm leaving you in Sarah Kids Capable Hands for not one whole minute. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our true news testing ready. So I've got a few different ingredients to do. Obviously, the first one being Angel King Spring Food. And I've also got some vegan hot butter, some vegetable shortening, that's my ratio. And I've got some high tea sugar. So, very simple stuff. Also, some vanilla bean toast, a little bit of lemon essence, and a pinch of salt. It will be really amazing with that. Uh, frosting and you add some salt, how it just enhances all the flavors. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to soften these enough that you can put your finger into it. So, I'm just gonna pop mm. in my, my, I'm gonna put my shortening straight into the microwave just for about 10 to 20 seconds. Yum! While you're doing that, do you mind if I put my mac and cheese into the oil? Go, do it! Wonderful. I've got a Secret cameraman going to be filming this whole process. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Can we see? Grab that. Have a look. Let's see if you can see that. Wonderful. All over it. Well, uh, my cameraman's fingers look beautiful. I hope you love them, everyone. All right. I've got my oil at about 170 degrees and this beautiful little device to lower things in. Do you see how that uh, it starts bubbling straight away? That means that my oil is at the right temperature. And it means it's vaporizing all of the water inside this product. So if you're frying right, what you're seeing now is all the water leaving the product and it's pushing the oil away from the surface, which means if you deep fry right, you actually don't have oil touching the outside of the food for quite a lot of the time. So I'm going to put, you don't want to overcrowd it, but I think we can fit at least six in here. And using this beautiful little device I got from Daiso, it means I don't have to put my hands anywhere near the oil. My house smells amazing right now, if anyone was interested. Another tip, if you are deep frying and it doesn't quite cover all of your food and you haven't fully submerged it, that's okay. Just splash some of that hot oil over the top. And that means that we're going to get that instant seal and it's going to be ready for when your food swishes around a bit and touches that oil. All right, back to my beautiful face and Sarah Kid. Okay, those look really yummy. So, I've, I've, the short thing I've put into the microwave and I've just it very important, it's very soft. And I've done the same thing with the butter. It's also melted a little bit, so it's absolutely fine. And I'm also going to do the same thing with our angel food cream tea. So let's just open this up. Now I want 120 grams of angel food cream cheese. And you notice all of my recipes are in grams so that you get a better result with your recipe and anyone in, anywhere in the world can make this. Alright, so I'm we, me and Sarah, I think last year, 10 years ago, time means nothing to me, but we taught a wonderful little uh, how to write a recipe speech at Sydney oh, Market a while ago. That and was so cute. It was a fun one. And one of the main things that I always teach people is if you're using tablespoons and you're using things like that that are inconsistent, for example, the US uh, tablespoon is different from the Australian tablespoon. So depending on the source of your recipe, you might be asking it up. So it is really great to use grammage to know that no matter what happens, it's consistent. Especially like, Sarah, you're the one that told me about, and it's obvious now, about measuring sifted flour or settled flour and what a dramatic difference that can have on a recipe. Duh! <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. And when you're like trying to convert a normal recipe to a gluten free recipe, gluten free flour is actually way different to normal flours. So that's why I never recommend trying to transition a non gluten free recipe into gluten free because chances are it's going to fail. And gluten free baking is completely different to just non gluten free baking. You need to be active differently. There's no gluten, you've got different ingredients that you're substituting. So it's always better just to find the gluten free recipe that you have to do. Because gluten is such a specific protein that doesn't, it, it isn't replicated in many other things. So if you just replace the gluten, we put the egg and we put all these other things to complement the gluten. So really you're working further away from your goal when you just try and replace a gluten-free recipe because the hero ingredient's gone. And I'm sorry, tapioca starch is not going to make a, do a needy dough. <laughs> okay, so I put my Angel Foods cream cheese into the microwave for a few seconds. I didn't completely melt it, but you can see... Like, it's a lot softer. So I'm going to put it 
So what I want to do is I'm going to actually beat these up individually so they're really nice and smooth and creamy. If you just put everything together into one bowl, you'll end up with a lumpy mixture. Mm. So I'm just going to do start with my short neck. Oh, it sounds like a transformer. <laughs> And while you're doing that, have a look, everyone. So my mac and cheese is halfway through frying, and it's starting to get nice and golden. So this is, now that it's got a nice hard seal, you can slosh them around and make sure they're all nice and uh, browning up evenly. You don't want to do this too early, or else you're just going to puncture a hole in your barrier and let all that oil in. So the idea of deep frying is really just like boiling, honestly, but you just need to make sure there's a beautiful seal around your food so the actual ingredient never touches the oil. And then it really is a minimal part of the dish that is coming into contact with oil, but you need to make sure you have a really tight seal or else the oil gets into the dish and it starts mixing and then your food falls apart. We're not saying that. That was awesome. All right, so I've just blended together, I've just blended my butter and my shortening so it's nice and smooth. I would probably do this a lot longer. Uh, when you blend vegan butter or margarine, it will go white, which is because you're all whiter frosting. Um, but for the purpose of today, I'm going to quite quickly. So now I'm just going to blend my other pieces of what's nice and smooth. And it's probably take a lot of it. So this is a question that I have as well. So a lot of non-vegan recipes ask that you beat the butter until it turns white. Do you find that that applies as well to non-vegan baking and using vegan butter substitutes? It, I don't know because I've never baked anything non vegan <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer we want and also same <laughs> I've been vegan for like forever, so I don't even, I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, wait till you hear me tell everyone, try my brand new authentic chicken. It's vegan. It tastes just like chicken. I haven't eaten chicken since I was 10 years old. I've got no idea what it tastes like, but shh, don't tell the non-vegans until they try it. Yeah. Okay. 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 You know what? We don't need to look at me. Let's just look at these. Oh, look how golden and beautiful they are coming out to be. It's really from any point now that you can take them out, but I want mine to become a little bit more brown and beautiful so that they can pick up lots of that gorgeous sauce we're about to make, which is also made out of oil. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to show you a few pieces really nice and smooth now. Uh, we probably need another 10 minutes of the feeding, but I'm not going to do that on my television because I'm not going to be able to talk to you. So my frosting is going to be a tiny little bit lumpy. I'll just, I'll just beat it for another 30 seconds. <laughs> She said 30. <laughs> All right. I wish we had the budget for like a soundtrack here. Just a little montage to music would be beautiful. Um, yeah. All right. She did it for 24 seconds. She lied to you, but it's fine. <laughs> you producers to help us produce our show. So if you're watching, you could use a couple of producers and some film. You know, some budget. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've, I've whipped it. It's a tiny bit lumpy, but it's still do for today. So I want to transfer everything into the bowl because I'm actually going to add in some icing for the later. So I'm just going to now beat everything together really quickly for like a minute. And while that is currently happening, we're in action mode. So have a look. Have a look. Oh. Make sure you let some of that oil fall off so you're not carrying it over because you know how full control over how much oil ends up on the outside of this product. This why we put it on a paper towel so that it absorbs all that excess oil. Oh my god, they look amazing! They are golden and brown, and we are ready to. <laughs> well, I'm ready to eat them. So you, back to you, Sarah. 
Don't, don't let me get ahead of myself. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, everything's whipped together. Now, if you're finding the three pieces running, it's okay because you can actually, if you're whip crossing and running, you can pop it in the fridge and it will pick them up. But now I'm just going to add in some salt. I've got a little bit of uh, lemon essence, a tiny bit, and lots of vanilla bean paste. Let me just get a spoon to get that out. Now, I always use a really high quality vanilla bean paste because it's going to be the best. Flavor. I know it's not small, but it's 100%. Um, and then I've got some icing sugar, and I'm just going to add a little bit in at a time. Because knowing me, I'm going to end up with icing sugar everywhere. Actually, everywhere. Corn flour and icing Boy, sugar. Too. I have to. Did you ever watch Dexter, Sarah? Oh, they're bringing it back. Did you know that? Yeah. But I go, every time I have icing sugar, I go full Dexter with my kitchen, and I like. Like cling wrap the whole thing, and I just I, I'm, it's going to become a crime scene by the time I'm done. That's so very excited for new Dexter. Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait! I was so sad when I was finished. I, I'm such an interesting ending. All right, so I'm going to put the icing sugar into my um, butter. You want to do this because icing sugar always clumps up, and then you end up with big clumps in your uh, frosting that you can never get out, and it's just your dragon. <laughs> I have done that so many times. The most beautiful cake. <coughs> And you have that bite, and you, the, the lumps will not come out unless that is sifted and beautiful before you even have a look at it. Yeah. So I'm just going to um, just fold in some of this icing sugar so I don't end up with it everywhere, but I've already ended up with it everywhere. Um, okay. And then I'm just going to put it together on a low speed. So, because I put the paper towel in, all I have to do now is remove it, and I've got my bowl of deep fried mac and cheese. Oh. Not until sauce. I'm going to add a little bit more. Oh, I've got more icing sugar here. A little bit more icing sugar. I know I didn't do that. <laughs> Okay, so it's very runny, so it needs to sit in the fridge for a while. I've actually already made some, um, this, I have some leftover in my fridge anyway that we can actually use. I love that you can't see me, Sarah, because I've just been dancing to fill in your dead zones, and I love that you've got no idea that I've just been crumping around here. We're a good, we're a good duo. So everyone, while Sarah's doing that, I have my mac and cheese balls ready to go, made from my beautiful mac and cheese from Angel Food, and I've got the mayonnaise that just showed you how to make. So I'm going to turn it into Bloody Mary mayo. So that means we need something tomato-y, I'm going to be using tomato paste, and then we need all the beautiful flavour. So I'm going to be going with lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce, which there are vegan versions of, at least here in Australia, at our supermarket. I'm going to be putting in capers and caper brine and a big pinch of celery salt, which is going to make it taste like a Bloody Mary. Celery salt? What's that? Oh, celery salt. Well, look, it is literally just celery seeds and salt mashed up, but it is a key ingredient. I used it in almost every kind of southern fried chicken. It gives like a, a pop of fresh flavour to your ingredients. Uh, if you ever try Old Bay Spice, which is from the US, one of the main uh, spices that people use to flavour seafood, one of the main ingredients is just celery salt. So get yourself some celery salt. It is uh, invaluable when it comes to making fake fish and chicken and whatnot on a vegan lifestyle. Ah, oh, such a great tip. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to get quite thick. Uh, and I probably just put flour on myself. Now, if you want it to be a bit whiter, you just add in some white food coloring from Mary Color. Did you say white food coloring? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So the white food colouring just helps it have a really clean, not off-white, does it? Yes, because we didn't spend very much time whipping our butter, um, it didn't get the chance to go white, 
But as you, so this is our frosting. Now it's way too runny. It needs to sit in the fridge for like 30 minutes to an hour just to firm up. So if anything happens with your frosting, sometimes you're, there's too much humidity, your kitchen's too hot, you melt the butter too much and your frosting is runny or it splits, don't panic. All you need to do is just pop it in the fridge, wait for it to firm up and then re-beat it and it's going to be absolutely fine. And look, I've got some here in my fridge from when I actually did the photos last week. And buttercream can eat for a really long time as well and you can freeze it. So I can actually use some of this buttercream while we wait for this one to come up in the fridge. Now we're going to move on to doing a couple of ready so up a little bit. And then step, so I'll let that just take over for a second. Now we're taking over now? Okay, cool. So I'm now getting started with my Bloody Mary dipping sauce. If you check out my website, or I'm pretty sure Angel Foods and Sarah have shared my recipes, uh, you've got the deep fried mac and cheese and also how to make the Bloody Mary dipping sauce. But the key elements are tomato paste. You definitely want tomato paste because it's got so much rich tomato flavor that we can t make this taste Bloody Mary based without adding lots and lots. We're going to have lemon juice. Forgive me, I'm using the fake one because we're a coronavirus and I couldn't go get a real lemon. Uh, we've got celery <laughs> salt, as mentioned. I've got vegan Worcestershire sauce, which is beautiful if you get your hands on it. A bit of mustard, capers, and our good friend Tabasco. So I'm going to be putting these all in. You'll get the ratios on my website, but really this is something to do to taste. So you want a lot of the tomato and then little splashes of everything else until you feel like you're having a good time. And I did make this the other day. So it comes out with this beautiful colour. I like to blend it up. And you can see it's nice and creamy and ready to dip a whole mac and cheese ball in. And it's a little bit spicy, just because mac and cheese balls tend to be delicious. But they're not the most, you know, they don't have their own flavour other than cheese. So you can really go hard on a spicy dipping sauce. So I'm going to start mixing in all these elements right now. Have a good pinch of celery salt. Splash of lemon juice. Splash of mustard. There we go. Uh, if you're blending this, then I would just put some fresh capers in, but a little splash of the brine is fine. Capers don't taste like capers in real life. Real capers get all their flavour from the brine. So you can just use that brine and steal some of that flavour away to put into your sauce. And I'm just going to go off camera and open my Worcestershire because I wasn't I wasn't organised. <laughs> okay, so while Zach's doing that, I've already got my cupcakes ready. This is such a beautiful cupcake recipe because you never know that it's gluten or, or um, vegan. It's really soft and delicate. I made this yesterday. I generally, when I make cupcakes, I want to make them on the day of eating. So I do find they dry out a little bit quicker. So what we want to do is we want to take out the centre of the cupcake so we can fill it with our butter sauce. So you can just use a knife and a teaspoon, or you can just use an apple for it. And I find this is what I want to do. And all you want to do is get your cupcake and push it around three quarters of the way down. Twist your apple. An apple cora, you genius. Yeah, and it'll pull, it'll pull the center out, and then you got this perfect little hole to pop in your jam. See, I used to have all these cupcakes, and I was like, I don't know how they fit this much flavor in a cupcake. My structure is largely bready, and then I remember seeing my first tutorial where you make the whole cupcake, and then you remove half of your whole cupcake, and you add more deliciousness. I love, I love the attitude behind that. Yeah. Have you, have you been watching Sugar Rush? Have you guys been watching Sugar Rush? Are you a fan of Sugar Rush? No. What? Oh my god, it's awesome. Good start. Is this Netflix? Yeah, it's Netflix. It's just a it's a competition for bakers. And the first there, there's three teams. The first thing they make is cupcakes, and then there's judges and Zumbo, who's the famous um, pastry chef in Australia, yeah, who's macarons. He's one of the judges. Um, and they just they battle each other. And uh, so there's a cupcake round and there's a dessert round. Then they have to make, like, this grand cake in, like, no time. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I, I assure you they don't. <laughs> I assure you there's a whole team. <laughs> uh, that looks like a good watch. It doesn't sound nearly as good as Vegan Around the World starring Sierra Kid currently available on Patreon. No, oh, yeah. it's, it's something you can fill the time with, I'm sure. <laughs> so it's I've just mixed in all my flavour and now we've got this beautiful kind of creamy orangey flavour. 
And you know what? I'm in lockdown. I'm not sharing with anyone. So I've just dipped my finger in. Ooh. Okay, that is good. It's kind of like, before you add the Tabasco, your flavour reads like a tomato-y Big Mac sauce. It's just beautiful because some of my favourite vegan mac and cheese balls you can get in Melbourne come with Big Mac sauce. So I'm really trying to steal their thunder. And you really want to come in hard with a bit of this Tabasco because we've got all this mac and cheese to flavour. So stir this in and essentially, not to put the hard word on you, Sarah, but I have successfully shown you how to make a beautiful mac and cheese ball and matching dipping sauce. And that's really all you have to do. If you get a copy of my cookbook, which you should, it's called The Eat Food, A Down and Dirty Cookbook. Uh, there's so many other dipping sauces. There's tzatziki mayo, how to make your own aioli, how to make Big Mac sauce, how to make uh, andalou sauce, which is like red pepper mayo with uh, beautiful spices. Yeah. So uh, do not be restricted with what I put together today. But anyway, back to Sarah, please. This was amazing. Okay, so I've taken my jam out of the freezer and it's still a little bit warm in the centre. And I'm going to show you a quick trick to cool it down. My, my freezer is just across this, like, ice on <laughs> All right. So to cool it down, you can just grab a couple of frozen raspberries. And just stir it through and it's actually going to adjust the temperature of the jam and cool it down. Um, you just have to be a little bit more vigilant when you're putting the jam into your cupcakes that you're not getting any of the frozen raspberries unless you don't really want it. That's just going to cool it down if you want to cool it as quick as possible. Now, so you want to fill your you want to fill your cupcakes. Now here's a tip. If these cupcakes aren't being eaten on the day, the jam's going to slope all the way through to the bottom. So what you want to do is actually grab a little bit of buttercream and just line those holes with some buttercream, and that's going to create a fat barrier. It's going to stop, stop making your cupcakes sorry. I love baking so much. When you like actually learn how to make these giant cakes, they're like, no, nah, add some buttercream as glue. Oh, you think you screwed it up? Put another cake in there. I love, <laughs> I love your can do attitude. <laughs> Yeah, you just fix it, it, it with more sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I've already spilled jam on my cupcake laughing at you. Um, <laughs> so you want to fill in the center of your cupcake. Don't overfill them. Just fill them just so they're like almost to the top. Oh, my jam's too thick. So you could sort of even do uh, a, like a, I've seen people do like a jam stuffed donut as a cupcake or a muffin where you bake them and then you sort of do exactly what you're doing and fill them. So I, I guess you could do a baked donut using a similar method to what you're doing at the moment. Oh, totally. Mm. Um, you can use like, and you can use like strawberry jam that you make. I've got some really easy jam recipes that you can whip up very quickly. Uh, I always find it's much nicer when you make your own. This one is called, it's got lemon juice in it so it's, and not as much sugar as normal so it's quite hard which is going to just help balance out the sweetness of the cupcake and yeah and cheese it's you all can about really the tell like a homemade jam when someone it doesn't have that one note strawberry sugar and there's the complexity of a tartness and it that's what makes i think those sort of dishes seem because the outside is just dusted in sugar usually and you want something a little more rich on the inside yeah absolutely i mean it's so easy to make and you want to you want the experience to be a combination of flavours when you're baking. You don't want it just to be sugar. So think about how you can use the flavours that you're baking with to actually enhance the overall creation. So in this one, we've got the lemon and the citrus in the cupcake, and then it's complemented by the tartness of the raspberry, which is like like subtly sweet. And then you've got this, the frosting on top, which is sour and sweet at the same time. So you've got a really lovely flavour palette when you're complementing different um, uh, flavours. So you've got sour, sweet, the buttercream's also a little bit salty and you've got tart and citrus as well. So And those, fla those flavours really balance out each other as well. So the experience with the overall cupcake is not just going to be some generic cupcake that you eat. It's actually going to be like this beautiful flavour profile experience that you're not going to forget. And then you have that it's gluten free and vegan after that. I mean, you've won. She's a magician. She's a witch. She's a witch. 
And <laughs> that's why it's really important to put things like salt into your baking because when you're making a sweet dish, it can be it, it can be obvious just to put sugar in, but salt helps balance things and salt is a flavor enhancer. So when you do have something as simple as a vanilla cake, you still want that salt in there to make everything else pop a little bit and you will taste the difference if you pay attention. Yes, and salt as well. Let's have a quick chat about that. A lot of people, especially in baking, don't understand that different salt affects baking recently. But when you're comparing table salt to sea salt, the flavors of that salt are completely different. The table salt is quite harsh, and if you're adding that into a biscuit, you're going to get that harsh, sharp bite at the end of the biscuit, and that's what's causing it because it's the table salt. Whereas if you're garnishing it and you're using like soft sea salt, you get this lingering salty flavor right on the back of the palate that's really being balanced out the best of the ingredients, and just gives such a greater taste experience. And there are so many different salts. If we're moving away from uh, sweets for a second, black salt has its own eggy flavor, which is a powerhouse in vegan cooking. A lot of people that I see use it don't seem to realize that when heat is applied to black salt, the flavor starts to leave immediately. So it is something that you want to sprinkle on top. You don't want to mix it through a tofu scramble. You want to sprinkle it on top at the end to make it sing. But there are so many different ways that you can have the saltiness and then use that to add flavor. So my favorite salt of the minute is smoked salt. And just having... Salt that is smoked adds just, you know, another layer of flavor that you can squeeze into a dish that doesn't have that much. Just having smoked salt makes it, oh, wow, this is different. And especially on a vegan diet when, you know, we can kind of get trapped into eating the same thing often or kind of relying on things. It's these little twists that you can put in your dish, like adding smoked salt or, like Sarah said, really analyzing your cupcake and making sure there's some tang in there means you're going to actually have much more exciting food that people are going to want to eat over and over again. Yes. So I'm glad I had some uh, butter cream left over the other day while packing the food because my butter cream still isn't done enough. Um, so what I'm going to do, I need to, I need to soften this so I'm choosing. I'm just going to pop this in the microwave for a few seconds. Everyone, cover your screens. Please put your hand over your screen for the next couple of seconds. Nothing happened. It's okay. <laughs> and I'm feeling a little bit under pressure because if I melt the buttercream too much, I'm going to have the same issue where it's too soft. Doesn't sound fun. Oh, that's probably good. All right, so I'm just gonna let that sit there for a minute. And I'm gonna quickly show you how to create the blood. And it's very, very easy. So we've got all we need is the glucose syrup. And this is how it's so sticky and so sticky and I'm gonna open it. Oh. Now what you need is you just need a few, like two or three tablespoons of your filling. And try not to get to any of the lumps in. Still on camera, wonderful. How's everyone going? Are you still watching? Are you still tuned in? There's still people making comments. Is this um, all for something? Sharon wants to know where you get black salt from. Oh, great question. Wildly inconsistent sources. So it is technically, it's, the official name is Kala Namak, which is K-A-L-A-N-A-M-A-K. And it's officially called Indian Black Salt. So Indian stores are generally, oh, have I been booted? I'm not sure if I'm still on camera. Oh, I might be talking to no one right now, or there might be someone watching me not know what's happening. I sure hope Sarah Kid somewhere. It says I'm alive. Oh, well, in case you're still listening, black salt is called Indian black salt, and you can get it from an Indian store. A lot of vegan-friendly grocery stores and specialty stores have started stocking it because it is so prevalent in vegan cuisine. Uh, but essentially, uh, some health food stores, pretty much all Indian supermarkets, and at the moment, pretty much all vegan specialty stores have started to stock it. So that's where you can track that down. So I hope that answered your question.
Hello. I can't see or hear anyone, but it says I'm live. I don't know if I'm ruining this. <laughs>